Los Angeles. So I'm joined today by my colleague Kat Covell. Hey, Will Murphy. Hey, so today, welcome to today's Tech Talks. Uh, we're going to be discussing layout views. Uh, see a lot of people are interested in that. Tons and tons of questions. We have one hour today. Uh, you know, type those questions to Cat. We'll try to get them answered. We're going to cover the basics maybe for about 15 minutes and then just kind of start going through the questions. Uh, if there's any audio trouble, make sure to uh, message us uh, so that we can try to correct any audio problems or even video problems. Um, there you have it. So let's get started. I didn't lose you. Just uh, getting the screen sharing going here. All right. So we're talking about layout views. If you've never seen a layout view, uh, this is the Learning the Ropes show. You guys can always find this in the demo shows folder, Learning the Ropes. And you can take a look at the layout view, which is layout view one. And I have a, uh, you know, my fixtures are here. They look very similar to what you might see in the stage view. Oops. You're going to get a pop-up soon. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to show you is how I set that up from scratch. Okay. You have some group objects in here. You have some fixtures in here. You can see I can select that as a group. Oops. I'm going to do this one. And you can bring those to full. If you had different levels, if you had 0 through 100, you would see those at various levels. Additionally, there's another group object you could bring to full. The other thing a layout view options you is the ability to lasso specific fixtures, or you could even tap to add fixtures. Or if you used the minus button, you could say minus this fixture. And now you can see I, I only have two fixtures selected. Bring those to fill. Uh, to zero, or you can add a fixture, or once again, you could go back to lassoing. So, a little interactive aspect of how layout views might work, uh, where you're either lassoing fixtures or you're tapping them, or maybe you're just using them for feedback. Uh, additionally, if we have some fixtures here, I put a preset of full here. If you have fixtures here and you're choosing some gobos, you'd see the actual gobos. And as well as if you choose some colors, you'd see the actual color of the fixture. You can also zoom in uh, since I'm in, if I toggle to move mode, I can move around the layout view. Uh, there's not really any particular limit to how much space is available in a, in a layout view. It's sort of dynamic, can get back to what I was doing with the specific size. Uh, you guys are all familiar with the clear button. What I also did is I put some clear macros in here. Uh, that's like tapping the clear button once, or this is three times clear, which basically clears out your programmer. So you can start programming again. And you see what I did there? I was not in select mode. So I actually dragged it around. So I go to full, I go to Congo blue. Uh, these are my little LED floor lights. Bring those to full. Maybe I want those in red. Maybe I want these two at full in red also, or makes it for very quick programming. So even though we set up these groups in the groups pool, we set up our presets, I put them all in one place so I can very quickly program or maybe uh, for punting or club shows or uh, corporate shows or one-offs or whatever you're dealing with. So how do we make this? Well, if you take a look at my stage view, since my stage view is already set up, I think I will use the stage view in order to build the layout view. And there are two components of these views. So I'm going to start from scratch so you understand. We'd start by build under the pools tab. We would open the layout pool. You can have 10,000 different layouts, uh, plenty, I hope. And then for the rest of the screen, I'm going to go under the other tab and draw the layout view. Now I'm currently still looking at this view because my layout view is linked to the selected layout. And I have different layouts in my show already that are at higher pools. So I want to make a new layout. So 
maybe you do this based on some group. You have to select the fixtures. You might select the fixtures via groups, or you might type in fixture 101 through uh, 112. I want to make a layout that shows that contains my alpha spots, my alpha beams, and my alpha washes. So now that these are these fixtures are selected, I'm going to store them to a layout object. When I click on that, because my layout view is set to link selected, I can see that it follows me there. However, the arrangement is not so necessarily helpful. Huh? They're all in a straight line and there's a grid in the background. Maybe you like the grid, maybe you don't. In order to arrange things in the layout view, you have to go to setup mode. I could grab one fixture at a time and actually move it. I could lasso a bunch and move those. I can pick different ones, but you notice what's interesting when you're in setup mode and you're tapping, it's only letting you select one at a time. So let me remind you of a nice shortcut that works with your on PC or the console on the internal keyboard. If you hold the control key, it stacks your selection. So you see I'm holding the control key right now and clicking so that I can grab random ones because obviously I can't lasso these. So that's a shortcut I find a lot of people aren't aware of. So I wanted to make you aware of that. It's sort of a boring way of uh, arranging fixtures, as you can see, trying to line these up, not so fun. So instead, I'm going to re-lasso all of these. And notice when, look at my encoder bar here at the bottom. When I'm in setup mode, my encoder bar changes for layout view setup. I'm going to choose range. I could arrange these in a line or a circle or a rectangle. <laughs> what might be more efficient is the camera view since I already set up my stage view. So I'm going to choose camera. I don't want to look at it from the front because that might be kind of weird. The fixtures kind of are on top of each other because you have the front truss and the back truss. Instead, I'm going to choose camera. I want to do the top view. And you see, we get a temporary um, view of what this is going to look like. Uh, I'm just going to hit apply and zoom to fit. And you can see they're basically arranged. You're going to still potentially have to do a little tweaking. Uh, maybe what a smarter approach would have been is to actually go to my stage view, go to the top view, and you see how there's a little angle here. Maybe you could orbit this a certain way so you get a better top view angle that might be more helpful for you. It's up to you. Awesome. Hey Will, we have a quick question. You're yeah. toggling between move and select. Is there any quicker way than using that title bar? No. Cool. Unless you know something I don't. Ah. <laughs> okay. So we'll go back to setup view. We'll do the reference to camera again. And the fixtures are going to be slightly in a different position because I did move that camera. Um, I put a layout view down here just to show you what kind of encoder controls exist. So I could lasso these fixtures, but you see, if I try to lasso these, I may end up grabbing my washes. Oh no, I got all my beams. I'll go to setup view on this. I'm going to move this on the Y. Okay, we're going to relasso everything. Uh, I then will toggle to the second page of encoders for layout view setup. I want to make these, I didn't want to do that. They went to zero. We're going to use the size all to change the size of the little objects that are visible. And I'm going to come down here and move on the X to get them a little closer together. Hey, Will. Yeah. I'm going to stop you one second because we've had uh, multiple responses. Uh, why didn't you use the top view 2D? I didn't want to. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's all. It's just personal <laughs> preference. But yeah, this top, the 2D view could have been better. Uh, at this point, I'm showing you how to move these objects around because that's obviously an, an important question, how to resize the objects uh, and via the setup mode, via the encoders. Cool. Um, it's a great answer. We're trying to learn you here. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> trying to teach you things. Yeah. Um, 
just in terms of that, you see how as I get the object bigger, all the little contents are dynamic. So to overcome this, as was just pointed out, we could uh, use the 2D view from the camera instead of the 3D view and maybe get an even better arrangement to start with. So I do top view 2D. We'll apply that. I'm still back to tiny objects, but maybe the arrangement makes you a little happier. So I hope you're you're realizing that you, you kind of have to get used to how this how this works. Uh, the encoders are particularly important to the arrangement of layout elements. That's what the official term is. These are actually elements. Um, you notice how moving around when I try to use the mouse, it's not really snapping to a grid. This is where this yellow ball can be helpful. And what I do is I set to snap always. The grid spacing is one. That's what you see. And then the actual snap grid is the hidden dot five. But the cool thing is as you as you're moving, the little snap grid shows up so you can see the alignment. This is how people end up getting really perfectly aligned uh, layout views. Okay, so we'll go back to size all. And I actually have a command wing here which can help me with the sizing. Um, can back. you actually uh, tap into the calculator there and just punch in the, your size as well? Yep. So you can click awesome. and it opens the calculator. So we're going to try to scale this up and see if everything can fit. Uh, I forgot to hit apply. Uh, scale all. I'll apply that. Let's see. So we just have to grab some of these and maybe pull them down a little bit so that they're not all overlapping each other. You can see how it's going to take a little time to try to get the things aligned the way you want. Now, the next order of business, uh, we had the groups pool. So, you know, I know the groups pool is on screen three, but I'm just going to draw this so you guys can see this all happening in one fell swoop. If I want this group in the layout view, I have to assign it there. Okay, so this is a very important differentiation with layout view. You have to store fixtures to layout view. Everything else you will assign there. You might want to write that down so you remember. You store fixtures, all the other objects like group pools, presets, etc., get assigned. So I'm going to say assign this group here. And you see how that group shows up. Uh, I want to assign this alpha beam here. And then this alpha washes group, I want to assign that in there as well. And by default, you see these actually look like they're uh, pool elements. Once again, you have to use the encoders for size. So in this case, I'm going to just double the size of these by typing in two. And now I can see them all. So if I just click one of these, I'll kind of align it with the alpha beams. And then there's the alpha washes. And if I lasso all those again, maybe on the Y, sorry, on the X, not the Y. The X, I'll go with three, which kind of spreads them out a little bit. Um, you noticed on my other layout view, they had little pictures associated with them. This is where you can right click on these. See how three of them are selected. You can right click. You could tap edit and click on the object or an even faster tool is right down here on the encoder bar, edit selected objects. We're gonna choose this left arrow and I'm sorry, it doesn't show up because I select these again. That doesn't show up because the visualization is pool icon. It's actually using the icon of the pool. If I wanted to do uh, simple, then I would see the actual uh, icon show up. And I would need to size this on the X, maybe four or five in order to fit all the text in there. 
And then what I did on the other layout view, you saw that I started with the background color was actually blue. So I went to the third page of encoders. I opened to this, I choose blue, I bring the brightness up and now their background is blue. So you get the choice. Um, you got your first introduction to editing the selected element. Uh, if you have all these fixtures lassoed and you edit fixture elements, you get the choice of showing the channel name, the fixture ID. Do you want to see a spot do you, uh, which would correlate with a spot or do you want the whole object filled? If you want to see gobo images, you have to set it to spot. Maybe you prefer filled and the icon size for the gobo images. Do you want the dimmer bar? Do you not? Do you want the dimmer value? Do you not? Um, lots of settings here. There's also yellow ball in the top left. Do you want to see those red markers or not? Uh, all of this was actually covered in a previous Tech Talks uh, that you find on our Tech Talks playlist, uh, which covered individual settings, if I remember correctly, yes. Kat. Yeah. Yes. So we go into these settings a lot deeper. I'm just doing a quick overview of how you set up this stuff. Uh, also, in my in my other layout view, I had presets. So, for example, the color presets. Let's say I want to assign a range of these. The fastest way to do this would be assign this through this here. And you see all of those show up. We'll do it again. Assign this through this here. And there you go, you have all your uh, color presets. Once again, I don't really like the size of them, so I'm gonna make them a lot bigger. Um, hey, well, is there a way to default these bigger when you bring them in? Yes, that was in these options. They're going to assume the grid sizing when you assign them. So make your grid sizing bigger if you wanted them to be three by three when you assign them. So I'm going to arrange these in a line. Uh, you know, we'll make our starting x minus 20. We'll make our ending x minus 20, and our ending y maybe zero. So five. Actually, I don't think these are all going to fit. I might have to just apply that for now. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. Although six, it looks seven, rather eight. colorful. Yeah. Oops, so we're gonna grab, pull some of those out. And so we'll put this here and we'll try that line again and say five. And this is where maybe it's helpful to shrink the size of the object. On the so four of them fit okay, but this is where, once again, playing around with the size of the object based on X or Y. So here I might go down to two. So I can see the entire name of the object, uh, but I don't really need it to be so tall. Now, at this point, these objects are linked. So if you ended up calling, uh, changing this name to be uh, blue, you'll see in the layout view it changes name as well. And I like to use the pool icon myself because then it gives me kind of the same experience. So once I'm done with uh, setup mode, you know, I choose my alpha spots, I bring them to full, and I can quickly pick my colors. And real quick, Will, we had a question. You brought in some groups, you brought in some presets. We're going to talk about bringing in macros a little bit later. Are there anything, is there anything that can't go in the layout view? Like what is the layout view to the show file? Yeah, so the layout view, any global show data can go in the layout view. And what I mean by that is presets are global show data, fixtures are global show data. Can you guys guess what the other kind of show data is? It, it would be users and user profiles. So you're familiar with views are specific to the user. Um, additionally, uh, there's views, MA tricks are actually specific to the user. And cameras. Cameras and the blanket on the masks. Uh, masks. Masks are specific to the user. So what you'll notice is that you can you can try to assign a view 
to a layout view, but and it will go in there, but as soon as you reload the show file, it loses its reference because the show could still go on, but the user profile could be extracted out, which would therefore remove all the user profile specific objects. So hopefully that answers that. Uh, these zoom bars, etc. Like I said, there's that other webinar. You can turn all that off if you wanted to, if you don't like them. You can turn off all the title bars so you can make a very specific view. If you want to lock a layout view to a specific, uh, regardless, uh, uh, if you want to lock a layout view to a specific layout, uh, use that button on the top right. You see, I can toggle between the two layouts, but this doesn't change. Whereas if I'm link selected, as I toggle between the two, it does change. Um, I think that covers kind of the basics there, right? Yeah, the only so, uh, thing I think we have left is uh, your plot. Yeah, so I was just going to show you a quick uh, inserting a bunch of LEDs. Uh, you see I have these LEDs on the back wall. So that's actually uh, 601 through 699. That is not, sorry, 501 through 599. So that's all my LEDs on the back wall. Uh, and we'll go back to layout view and I will store those to this layout. See how they're all sped out. Now uh, we go to setup, arrange, camera. Uh, yeah, front view 2D, apply and zoom to fit. By the way, to turn off that grid, set your grid spacing to zero. And since we're in setup mode, we could change the size to maybe one, so the, video, the uh, LEDs are a little easier to see. By the way, layout views are what are, what are referenced by bitmap fixtures. Um, this square object would represent the bitmap area. I'm not covering this in this webinar because we already did a webinar on it and it is posted on our Tech Talks channel on YouTube. If you don't know how to get there, go to support.actlighting.com. Uh, you'll see a big red button that says YouTube, and that'll take you to the TechSox playlist. Uh, so that's putting LEDs in. Then we want to talk about a plot. So let's say I want to import a plot and then overlay my fixtures. I'm going to start with an empty layout. You see, I just stored that there. It's empty layout. I didn't store any fixtures to it. Um, I'm going to go to setup. We're going to put a picture in. The picture is going to fit inside of this box. So I go to image. I go to image images. Where are these coming from? These are coming from my image pool. If you aren't familiar with the, oops, if you aren't familiar with the image pool, uh, we would draw an image pool here. There are images. I have a plot here. How did I get that in there? Uh, I'll just delete it. Right click, import image, go to your USB stick, which is actually cat's USB stick in this case, uh, and my plot.png, import that. There's my plot, it's in my image pool. So now when I go back to my layout view, I will edit. I have this square selected, so I edit selected. I go to images, I see my plot, I say please, and there we go, it's in there. Resizing this is just like other any other element. So I could change the size. Maybe I want it to be 20. Um, now, once again, this is just a plot. It's just a PDF. I ha happen to keep the pictures of the fixtures. You don't have to do that. But what that's going to do for me is going to help me arrange the fixtures over my plot. So I come back here. I select all my alpha spots, washes, beams. I choose store. I store them. Uh, into the layout view, merge. Did they show up? No. Yes. Oops. What did I mess up there? Mess something up. Store. Merge. Hey, there, there, there. Yeah, I'm not sure what I messed up that first go around. Anyway, to get sort of close, I'm going to arrange once again by camera, top view 2D, apply, um, zoom out a little bit to this. And 
I don't know, we'll do something like that. So here is where, oops. Ah, sorry, I'm getting clicky. Um, nobody said this process is going to be super fast. I'm just trying to be a little faster for the webinar. So we move those up there. <laughs> Go figure. I sized the plot exactly how it should be. That's incredible. Uh, so these, so these ones don't perfectly line up, or do they? Yeah, they do. Uh, so we'll get. So these those. are examples of how to make your life go a little bit faster. Just get the sizing right. Yeah. Um, and then these ones. And there we go. So zoom to fit. So that particular. Uh, rectangle actually has some settings associated with it. I'm going to say group select off and therefore even if I accidentally click in the rectangle it doesn't select all the fixtures but I can still lasso fixtures like normal. Um, once again this might be one of those situations where it's helpful to increase the size of your objects uh, to something a little bit more useful and there we can actually see the dimmer channels. You, know, you can see how you can play around with this more, get a little bit more precise, but you can import, uh, you know, your, your plot there. So that was a common question. Yes, um, very much so. Right, so that's good. Yeah. And then there's a, the next one is just kind of showing you, you know, everybody wants to know how do I toggle images in a layout view, right? Uh, how about we talk about multi-part fixtures? Oh, I multi feel like we can spend fixtures. a lot of time on the dynamic sure. um, layout. So um, we did have a question of how, how best to manage multi-part fixtures uh, in relation to the layout view. Sure. So multi-part fixtures, each individual instance uh, of a multi-instance fixture. So I have a I have BIs here. You might think of it as a single fixture, 601, but to the software, every instance is a unique fixture. So therefore, to the layout view, every instance is a unique element, which is treated like an individual fixture. Once again, this is where setting up your stage view becomes really helpful. So 601 through, these are my BIs. You know, having this set up is very helpful. Uh, we'll go back to layout view. I'm going to store a new layout. When I go here, these are all the individual instances, which is why it's super tiny, each instance, right? So I would use setup again. Uh, we'll do the camera and the top 2D view again and apply. And we zoom to fit. And we can see each individual instance is showing up there plus the main instance. Now, I don't particularly think the main instance is as useful because you have individual fixtures inside one big fixture. So this is where having uh, groups um, set up for the main instance versus all the individual instances can make this process a little faster. So we'll go to our groups pool. I didn't actually make the groups yet, so we'll just make those real quick. Um, the MA tricks, there's 38 instances, so my interleave will be 38. And you can see I just selected all the dot ones. Um, Todd Fisher sheet somewhere. Yeah, we can see the fixture sheet is showing me I have just the dot ones selected. Uh, we'll store that to this group. And now what I could do is I would disable the MA tricks. And then I would say minus this group, which leaves me all the individual instances. Uh, therefore, that's all the individual instances. There's the main fixtures. Uh, this is also where worlds can become helpful in order to help me get around this. I'm going to store just the main instance into the world, go into the world, and guess what? I don't see those individual instances anymore. And if I actually jump back to my the original layout I was using, uh, this one, you notice how because I'm in the world, I hope you're following me here, this might be a little confusing. Because I'm in the world, uh, the layout view is responding to the world I'm in. So LEDs, it's only showing me the LEDs, it's only showing me the movers. 
Whereas if I go to the BI, I only see the main first instance. I don't see all the individual instances. So we're going to go to setup and we're going to delete all of those. And now when I go back to the full, I'm left with just seeing the individual instances of the head of the BI. And you could tell from the spacing here, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to, to bring these together. That's where, once again, snap always becomes helpful uh, because align these much closer together. Everybody's going to have their little shortcuts. You know, I acknowledge you're watching me. Maybe you're familiar with a faster way to do this. You know, this is, you know, practice. <laughs> that's how you're going to, that's a good, that's how you're going to figure out how to do this stuff faster if you're doing it uh, often, more often. And the problem is I'm not able to necessarily get these grabbed and moved because I'm actually clicking in side, if I get even closer here, you see how we have individual instances. If I don't actually click a fixture, I can't move it. What I'm doing is I'm accidentally clicking in the middle and it's moving. So hopefully you're following me. You think they're following me, Kat? <laughs> I hope they are. No one's uh, <laughs> saying any of the uh, different here. Okay. Good, good. So I'm not sure, is there more to show on the multi-instance? Layout no, not really. Concept. It's just, it's just again, you're showing examples of how all of this stuff takes management. So yeah. yeah, there's no easy. I mean, it's it's easy, but it's not it's not quick. It's going to be based on your show. It's going to be based on how you want to select it, how you've set up your groups. Uh, I think you're showing a really good example of how to do it, but how you're going to do it, it it's um, everybody's going to approach. Yeah, it apples and oranges. <laughs> You ready for this dynamic thing, Will? Yeah, yeah. We'll show you a little dynamic thing since many people want to ask about that. So, how about uh, real quick? I'll let you know the things we're going to cover. Um, for those of you who have asked the questions, that way you know to pay attention right now. Um, we want to talk about the image sizes, um, how best to keep your um, layouts so that they're not um, just flooding your show file. I guess I see there's a lot of questions about how to make sure that it, it works. Um, it works efficiently. Uh, and then, of course, the order of operations, like what steps are you taking to make this particular layout? You got all that, Will? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, image size. Where can we find image size? Yeah, so image size, what the, what the like, rules are? Yeah. Yeah, so that's something that's actually posted in the help manual. Um... Does it take you directly there? Uh, image pool is where you're going to get some of these rules about maximum size, you know, 240 by 240. Minimum size of the image is 180 by 180. These are guidelines. Then you get supported file types, um, JPEG, GIFs, PNGs. The GIF, by the way, is not a, uh, it's not the motion GIF that you guys might be used to on the, on the web. It, it, it's only, if you actually have a GIF, it's only the first frame uh, that would show up. So don't be confused. You can't have things automatically playing in the, in the console. So what people ask all the time is they want to be able to tap a button and have the image change. So here we imported a lamp off image and a lamp on image. And I'm going to show you a macro. Let's just look at a simple macro here that turns all the fixtures on. And we're doing this in the programmer just to give you the idea. Fixture 101 through 112 at 100. Uh, I should have probably done a clear selection there. Um, then we'd have a clear selection again, fixture 101 through 112 at zero. We're going to run the first two lines and then we're going to wait for you. I'm not supposed to type go. We're going to wait for you to hit go and then it's going to run the next two lines. So this is my, if you're familiar with macros, 
this works with any syntax. So I'm doing it in the program, I'll just give you the idea, but you could trigger an executor, you know, go executor one, off executor one. Not load predefined label, so on off lights. That's my dumb label. Lights on, lights off. See how it's basically a toggle? It tells me it's on line, line two, it's waiting for a go. All right, so that's my toggle macro. Well, I need to put it in the layout view, right? So I need to assign it there. It's super tiny. Uh, so I'm gonna go to like three, no, I'm gonna go to five. I'm gonna go to six, okay. Uh, there we go, we'll put that right about right in the middle there. So on, off, uh, that's a fancy macro, but there's no image. It's why, because we have to go to setup, Remember, edit selected, image, and lamp off. Cool. Oh, what did I mess up? Does anybody know? I need it to not be the pool icon. I need it to be simple. Yay, now I have an image. And I'm clicking my macro. And yeah, well, why is it doing this? Because I haven't actually told it to toggle images either. By the way, the name is stupid, so I'm gonna turn the name off. I don't want the ID, I just want a very simple image. So it's this picture of a lamp off. And as I toggle my macro, it's going on and off. So now how are we going to make this image dynamic? Well, these are what I would refer to as my root images. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this and make this pool a little bit bigger. And real quick, how do we make these images? Uh, we found them online and imported them. Yeah. And paid attention to the sizing. So what I actually want to do is I want to keep these images there. 33 and 34, this will be my macro image. So I'm just going to rename this real quick. Go to setup. Once again, edit selected. I want this to reference macro image. Okay, so this is referencing this macro image. Now, watch my syntax. Copy image 33 at image 26. Overwrite. Do you see how this pool icon 26 changed as well as what I see in my layout view? Up arrow this time. We'll copy image 34 at image 26. All right, so you're getting an overwrite pop up. Does anybody know why? It's going to be boring. That's not going to work out so well. So this is where I will do the slash option O. You could just leave it at O. It's going to automatically overwrite, or you could type overwrite. So I hope you're following me in terms of the syntax that we're using. So you can probably guess what we have to do. We have to include that syntax in our macro. So this is our macro editor. We will, sorry, uh, after the lights turn on, we want image 34, which is on. And then after the lights turn off, we need image 33. So you can see how I can use O or overwrite, but you notice the go is in the wrong spot. So we set that to follow and now the go goes here. So we clear selection, turn the lights on and copy the on image to image 26, which is being referenced by the layout view element. And when I hit go again, the lights turn off and I copy the off image to image 26, which is being referenced by the pool element. And there is how you do what people have termed dynamic layout. <laughs> it's not a real term. People made this up. This is just the layout view and this is what you can do with it. And this is how it kind of responds. Um, if you guys, by the way, if you don't like the idea, you know, Kat and I were talking about this before the show. If you don't like the idea of setting up a toggle macro, something that you actually want to tap. Maybe you just want a status image, right? So I would just put a status image up here, uh, visualize this as image 26. Now, this is just a picture, but it's responding again because it's just a static image. This is just a square box referencing this item. So you could have a whole slew of macros here and just have a status image of what's actually going on as you tap your different macros. Cool. You ready for some questions, Will? Yeah. All right. 
Uh, let me see. I've already asked that. Um, this seems to be a common one here. What happens when we're copying um, layouts? So I, I have a couple different um, questions about uh, can we copy the whole layout? Um, do the settings come from layout to layout? And then finally, how do we get a layout view out of one show and into another show? So for one thing, can we copy a layout? Yeah, I think that's super easy. So you want layout two? It, this is just an object like everything else in the show, so copy it there. Right. And now it's copied. What comes along with it? All the elements and all the little settings that are associated with the specific layout object. In the other in the other layout video, we talk more about all these settings. But yeah, it will come with it. Um, just to clarify, you guys, zoom is a, not a function of the layout objects. It's a function of the view. So right here, I call the view. You see how it always comes back to that zoom level? If you want a different zoom level, you have to remember to restore your view after you set the zoom, OK? I see that confusion a lot because layout objects don't have a clue what you see. View objects are designed to be associated with what you see. Okay. Can you set defaults for your layout view? I know you showed it a little bit earlier, but yeah. I figured you can see it again. <laughs> and save to default. Awesome. And these even, oops, uh, if you're in setup and you're in here, save to default, load from default. Yep. All right, and then the final question, which is, how do we take this layout and get it into a new show? By the way, just back one up. Defaults are also in user settings. You can set them up here as well. If you're really not sure, go here. Now you know they're definitely the defaults. Sorry, what was that question again? Uh, how do we bring the layout, uh, this layout view, into a new show file? Partial show read? Well, yeah, I mean, we got to get all the objects. We got to get our fixture. We got to get our patches. We got to get our groups. We have to. You have to bring all the elements in. It's not yes. just the the layout's not going to bring the elements in for you. It's an order of operations thing. Yeah, you logically should be able to make the conclusion that a layout view is referencing all these presets which are in the pool. If you try to take this layout view to another show and those presets don't exist, you're not going to see anything. If these fixtures don't exist in another show, you're not going to see anything. Same with the groups, images. Layout view is a place for you to put all the objects of the show into one location. So you can't just magically export it and import it into another show. You have to bring all the objects with it first, fixtures, presets, groups, objects, images, etc. And then you can bring the layout object in and it'll be okay. And we have two places where you can um, check this out. We do have a PSR Tech Talks. Mm -hmm. We do have a really great bulletin on the website, too, about um, importing and exporting objects. Yep. So that's that's really two good references uh, to check out to be able to, to get that order of operations down. Export in the help manual talks about actually exporting individual objects, but those objects reference other things. So you can't just export a single object and think it's going to magically work. You got to make sure everything else comes with it. And this element is referencing preset 28. So if you try to bring this preset and make it something else, this element's not going to know what to do. Things to look out for when trying to transfer objects around. As I say, that's the programmer's job, and you're a programmer. <laughs> <laughs> Data management, right? Yeah. Well, all yep. right. Cool. Hey, Will, I got a question for you. You ready for it? I am, yeah. How can I see two layouts on one screen? Oh, just make that one smaller and draw another one. Oh, what, what if I wanted three? <laughs> oh, it's too small. It's not enough space. I, I like that question. Yeah. But then we get this call. All my layouts are following me. <laughs> okay, once again, this is number one, this is number two, and this is number four. And don't now, forget to store that as a view. Yeah. <laughs> you do have to remember, I mean, I mean, empty up a view here. Um, you know, once you're happy with your zoom setting, store it. Now you can you have this. Now, keep in mind, remember, title buttons can get turned off. 
Now you have no title buttons, so that button doesn't exist, so you have to remember to do the at least select layout. Cool. Yeah, how about another one of those most asked about questions? Will, uh, are there any plans, or how would I be able to, add executor buttons or faders to my layout view? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the, the more common approach is what we already sort of talked about. Here, this macro, I'm triggering programmer syntax. I would change this to executor, you know, go executors. Um, there is no way to have faders in the layout view. There is a way, though, you could do what we call pool playbacks. And let me show you what that means before we talk about layout view. Uh, we would go to the sequence pool. And I have this sequence here. Um, that actually is on an executor. It's executor 30, so I'm going to move that to executor 1. The sequence pool has something called pool playbacks. You need to enable direct to action button, and what it's doing is the actual sequence is playing in the pool. Um, it can be a little confusing if you accidentally enable it, but you can see I'm stepping through the queues, but these are not related. I know they're the same sequence, but playback is separate. Sequence is just a sequence of queues. Pool playback means it's playing directly in the pool. You could take advantage of that feature from right within the layout view. So I'll just draw a layout view here. Um, we're going to store a new layout. By the way, the keyword is there. And you have to hold MA, do layout 10. I would assign sequence 100 here. We'll set that up, make it gigantic. Yeah, it's huge. I guess you wouldn't have one. You put a bunch of them in here. <laughs> Um, we have this little mode called uh, pool playback, uh, pool playback direct action should do essentially the same thing and you even get to see the cues playing from within the layout. Make sense? If you shrink it down or zoom out as I did, it tends to look a little bit better. <laughs> so it's not so crazy. Um, and then uh, just like any other element, object, etc., you could, uh, it's currently using the pool icon, but you could go to a simple view and it's still working as a pool playback. You just don't see the queue numbers. And then I would do something like border colors red and the background is blue. That's very boring. Uh, you just play around with settings and you can find more stuff for it to look like, but that's the idea. That's about as close as you're going to get to what you specifically asked. Uh, so everything you've been doing so far, Will, is via the GUI. Um, is there a way to completely build your layout view in the command line? Not really. I'm happy with that answer. We can move on, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I was just gonna. I was just gonna look at something real quick. Um, yeah, there's. If there was stuff to do via command line while you were interacting with it, you'd see it changing the command line. So there's not. It is on the wish list. Just see what questions are stacking up here. Um, is it possible to see CITP in layout? Unfortunately, no. I've heard that one too, but it's just on the wish list right now. What about RDM? RDM, yes, but with the fixtures themselves. Uh, I'm not sure I'd be able to show this here since I don't have any RDM set up, but the, there's a setting. Uh, 
God. I think, oh, there it is, show RDM notification. So the individual fixture objects, um, in the same way you'd see a little RDM tag in the fixture sheet, your layout view can do the same thing, oops, as long as uh, RDM notification is on. If you're annoyed by that, turn it off. Okay. Yeah, Pretty good like, questions, you guys. Yeah, I feel like we've covered a good a good chunk of these. Um, we covered some basics. We covered some good practices. Um, covered all of this. You ready for something not layout related for maybe the last ten minutes or so here? Yeah, we can double check what kind of questions are coming in. Uh, oh, looks like I got one more. Um, you might have already covered this, uh, but what's the difference between DMX, value, etc. in the title bar button? Oh, actually, you know what? I'm excited to show that one. Um, oof. You know why this is a really important button is because of virtual dimmer. You remember that one, Kat? Being that you're so excited about it, I'm actually excited to learn about this, Will. True. So these LEDs are virtual dimmer. Uh, do you guys remember these LEDs? Those four LEDs. These are my up lights on my truss. Take a look at this. Select all those. Bring them to get out of setup mode, so I can actually use my layout view. Bring those to full. If you go to DMX, uh, maybe we, maybe we fix this. <laughs> uh, be good if we fix this. Bear with me a second, sorry. Yeah, we fixed this problem. The virtual dimmers used to not show up in the layout view. Um, so you had to make sure you were on value mode. But once again, there's a difference between values, DMX, and output. So values is always going to show you what's in your programmer, which means if you enable blind, you still see what your programmer. But look, if I go to DMX, you see how I toggle blind? By DMX, my layout view is actually showing me what's going out of my console, whereas values is always showing me what's in my programmer. Is that a clear enough example? Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So you might have different layouts set up. Maybe one is for what's really happening in the real world and the output le DMX level and what's happening in your programmer. Because you have, it's, 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 by the way, if you've watched our other webinars or you know about this, there's a layer control bar. Same thing in the, in the fixture sheet, value layer versus output layer. So if, so if blind works via that output, I take a preview is the exact same then as well. Yeah, yeah, just gonna, yeah. When, since it'll be seeing your DMX. Yep, preview. Output, if yeah. you were in preview mode and your layout view was on the DMX layer, you wouldn't see the layout reacting to your preview queue. Cool. All right, here's the big question of the day, Will. You're on the new software. Yeah. How do we color that executor? <laughs> oh, geez. See, appearance commands. Just, I mean, if you know how to. Uh, <laughs> this question is so funny to me because people are like, oh, "How do I color an executor?" I'm like, "Did you learn how to color a macro object or a group object or a preset? It's it's the same. Why would it be different?" <laughs> um, appearance. Let me executor. Random to manual that for you. Yeah, I mean, there yeah, it's red. How do I learn about appearance? I type help appearance. The Germans uh, are pretty logical in the way we design the software. So it's always going to be the same. There we go. I have a red executor. Um, keep Ooh, in mind, another executor this, is, this can be very confusing uh, for someone new walking up uh, because for example, if it's roughly this, what, this like orangey color, 
Well, that looks kind of like a group master. I didn't really match it too well, but it looks like it's fixed, or it looks like a group master, and you know, this can be really tough for somebody coming new to the show, which is why we have a load predefined to reset appearance on the current page and reset appearance on sequences and effects and preset pools and and uh, reset appearance on cues. These are these are helpful for tech support and anybody taking over a show. So just be aware. How about another quick one, Will? Yeah. I got a good one for you. Uh, how do I properly set uh, a key to, let's say, a flash function? How can I do that real quick? Like assign flash here. Yes, assign flash here. Yay! That's a good, nice, easy one. <laughs> I like those. Those are fun. If you're not familiar with the assign keyword, it's how you assign settings. That's the idea. How about one last question before we get into um, maybe where we can see our tech talks, maybe we can where we can you know get some more knowledge and all that jazz. Will, uh, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Seems to be kind of a. I like that question. It's pretty good. We're learning a little about yeah. Will here. Mint chocolate chip. Oh, good one. Always has been. <laughs> good one. All right. All right. So, just want to check out our. Tech Talks, uh, if the internet works. Yeah. Oops. You can always go to acclighting.com. There we go. Support tab would take you to support.acclighting.com. This is our support hub. Dashboard, you can enter to the knowledge base or jump to the YouTube channel. So if we jump to YouTube, uh, this is our YouTube channel. We go to our playlists. I would grab the Tech Talks playlist and a couple of the ones we pointed out, the layout view from 3.2. Lots of individual settings go going on in there. And bitmaps. Remember I said bitmaps reference. Uh, layout views. We go over that. And to the person who asked the RDM question, RDM, I'm pretty sure we actually show it responding in the layout view. I don't quite remember, but at least you learn about how RDM works. Okay. And the knowledge base, tons of information. Uh, we did talk about the importing and exporting uh, knowledge base. I think that's a really, really good one. I feel like that's one that I send out quite often. This is important to get the uh, the syntax correct, and we have a good example of it in this particular knowledge base. Yeah. yeah. Syntax options, import, export, and also don't forget about some of those additional Grand MA2 resources, such as MA Share, the new help manual, uh, the uh, actual MA Lighting YouTube channel, which comes from MA International, and there's the, don't forget about the new fixture share. Where do you learn about the new fixture share? Well, if you're on a downloads page, we highly encourage you to read our FAQ. Uh, talks about new release information and you know what's the deal with that new fixture share? How am I supposed to deal with fixture profiles? Where am I supposed to look? You have to look in three pages now, but you will be taken to the new fixture share little tutorial. And Will, do we recommend the new software? Is it on our web page? As soon as it's posted, we're cool with it. So 3341 is up there. It's a bug fix. If you're already on 3.3, you probably should jump into the bug fix. It's not a bad idea, but be forewarned. We always suggest you run through your show after moving software versions. Cool. I cool. call it. I call it a tech talk. Yeah, it's a pretty good tech talk. Thanks was, for uh, was fun, Will. joining us today. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned a lot. We had fun. Happy programming. Happy programming. <laughs>